Hello Internet, Internet. Big Dave is here, and I am cheap. Sure. Hello Internet, it's Big Dave here, and I would like to introduce you to Heart and Slash. This is a third-person brawler with roguelike elements, which is currently being developed by a heartful of games. At the time of this recording, there is a Kickstarter running for Heart and Slash. They are about $2,700 short of their $20,000 goal with about 16 days left. So I think they will cruise into that goal, but I really enjoyed what I played of this game. I've really enjoyed what I've read about this game. And so I thought I'd try to bring it all to you in case you wanted to help support the completion of Heart and Slash. In a bit of a change from the way things are normally done in my videos, I'm not actually live playing the game right now, so don't expect me to react to anything that's happening on screen. I wanted to give you a nice backdrop over which I could tell you about some of the details of the Kickstarter because they've done some things with this Kickstarter pitch that I really respect and some things that I think a lot of developers should take note of when crafting their own Kickstarter pitch. First up, and maybe this is a little bit shallow of me, it just looks good. It's a really nice looking pitch text intermixed with graphics from the game, with logos, with banners for their green light. It just looks really nice. It's not too busy, but it's also not just an endless wall of text. Make it your own. Make it look good. Designing it well tells me a little bit about the care that you've taken with your game. And yes, ultimately how good your pitch looks does not mean that you'll finish your game. It doesn't mean that your game will be of great quality, but it goes a long way towards making that good first impression. Another thing that makes a great first impression on me, because this is a personal pet peeve, is not launching a brand new Kickstarter with stretch goals. How presumptuous is that? A game that you could not get funded through any other means, launching with stretch goals that sometimes go up to a thousand times your original asking on the Kickstarter. Heart and Slash was asking for $20,000, very quickly acquired about 70% of that funding, and then added stretch goals. In the FAQ, they have a very honest response to the question of where are stretch goals, and that is, we think it's too early. They waited until the time was right, until they had gotten to a certain level of funding that made them feel comfortable that they would not only hit their goal, but exceed it, and then they added stretch goals. A very, very nice way of doing things. Thank you very much for doing it, and you may have just inspired me to actually contribute to your Kickstarter. Another thing that really sells a Kickstarter to me is honesty. Not just telling me facts like, hey, there's going to be 20 enemies and 17 levels, etc., etc., but actually giving me insight into the project, talking about the status of the project and the money and how it will be used in an honest manner. Heart and Slash does both of those things by giving a nice, nice chart of the actual status of the project, showing it to be about 25% overall complete, and talking about the money and giving a nice breakdown of where the money will go and exactly how they plan to use it. Really nice to see that and really encouraging to me as a potential backer. Now, the last two things I want to cover, I feel like I shouldn't even need to say these. They're so basic. They're such no-brainers, but you'd be surprised at how many Kickstarters actually make the mistake of not doing these two very simple things that I think really increase your chances for success. First of all, have something for people to play, if it's at all possible. If your game is anywhere beyond the conceptualization stage, even if it's a single level demo, even if it's a tech demo, have something that people can play. This includes releasing your private alpha or your press alpha to the public so that people can get their hands on the game. Now, Heart and Slash did not initially launch with a public alpha. They first sent out mailers to press, got press play in their game, got a buzz built, and then very wisely released a demo out to the public. Now this actually kind of works as an interesting two-prong attack, because first, you get press talking about your game, directing people to your newly launched Kickstarter, and then, when you release the alpha, those same press say, hey, remember that game I was playing a week ago and I told you it was great and you should Kickstart it? Well now, go back to the Kickstarter page because you can finally play it too. It's almost kind of like a two-for-one. The press initially gets people interested in your Kickstarter and then sends more people back when you actually release your playable demo. I'm not going to say it's better than launching with a playable demo, but it's certainly a nice way of drumming up a little extra publicity. And finally, and this is a big one for me, please update your Kickstarter. The first thing I do if I see a Kickstarter that's more than three days old is I go to the updates section and I look to see if the developer is actually communicating. If it's been two weeks and you got nothing, nothing on your updates, I don't think you care. And I don't think you're actually going to do whatever you say in your pitch, no matter how fabulous that pitch might be. 
And yes, Heart and Slash is doing a bang up job in this department as well with 14 updates in about 14 days. And they show you here that the updates don't need to be big breaking news. Talk about your story. Talk about a mechanic. Talk about the press reception that you're getting. Talk about the new people that you've added to your team. Just talk about your game. Show your passion for the project that you're working on. And it's going to encourage people to get behind what you're doing. And this is just a sample of the secrets that I have in my new book, Crowdfunding Fundamentals. Which it sounds like I'm shilling for a book at this point, right? But my point here is that this is a great example of how to do a Kickstarter and how to do it really well. And I think people need to stand up and take notice of that. So I wanted to spend like a good five minutes talking about that. And I think I've accomplished that. So now let's actually talk about the game and what I think about it. First off, I want to say that I think Heart and Slash is absolutely moist with possibilities. It's dripping with potential. And I'm excited to see what this game will eventually become as a finished product. So what is the intent here? What did the developers envision that finished product actually be? Well, uh, let's get it from the Kickstarter pitch itself. Heart and Slash is a fast-paced brawler with roguelike elements, inspired in equal parts by Bayonetta, Mega Man, and ancient domains of mystery. It's also a throwback to our earlier years as gamers when playing games was all joy. So yeah, that sounds pretty good, right? But that's what pitches do. They sound good. You're name dropping Mega Man, Bayonetta, and one of the greatest roguelikes of the last 20 years. But how does that actually translate into what's present at this time? Well, I'm happy to say what is here at this early alpha stage is really great. The graphic style is nice. I like it a whole lot. As you get closer to the characters, you can see that they're kind of built of voxels, and I like that art style quite a bit. And more than just me personally liking the art style, I think you can say that it really fits with their aesthetic. The robotic world mixes well with that boxy voxel art style, and everything just has a really nice crisp look. While the graphics feel like they're in a pretty darn good place, the combat definitely isn't there yet. They name drop Bayonetta in their Kickstarter pitch, and I have to say they have a long way to go before they're on the level of any Platinum game. There are basic building blocks there. There are nice combos, there's a launcher, there's air combat. It's all pretty good, but none of it feels refined at all. And now you wouldn't really expect it to be refined at this early stage, so I can forgive them, certainly, for that. I want to see this continue to grow, and it seems like this is one of the things that they want to focus on. Better animations for combat. Better feel in combat. Personally, I had a lot of problems judging distance. It almost felt like early 3D fighting games, 3D spectacle fighters, where you just couldn't quite ever feel where someone was. I almost felt like I needed a lock-on or... I needed my guy to do more lunging forward when I swung something to help me judge and close distance, and it just wasn't there. Now one thing that was there already was the roguelike feeling. Now they name drop Ancient Domains of Mystery, a classic roguelike coming out in 1994-ish, and I have to say I'm not quite there on that yet. I really see a lot more of a, a Binding of Isaac kind of feel in this. There are a series of rooms that you are often locked in until you completely kill enemies. Then you move on to the next area. You constantly look for items to better upgrade yourself. It feels less like exploring a labyrinthian dungeon and a lot more like moving from arena battle to arena battle in the same way that The Binding of Isaac pulls off its combat and its progression. Heart and Slash does try to throw something original into this formulaic approach by giving us jumping puzzles. So certain rooms you'll approach will just be a series of platforms, laser beams very often, but basically you need to get from one side of the room to the other without much in the way of solid floor to help you do that. Unfortunately for me, this really was a detriment to my fun. These 3D platforming sections didn't work at all. The control was just not there for something like this to be in the game. Now it looks like later on, you will get a jetpack, which will make these rooms trivial, and I really can't wait to get that because honestly, I had no fun in those rooms and anytime I encountered one that I could not otherwise avoid, it always resulted in the end of my game. Overall though, Heart and Slash really impressed me. This is great for an early alpha, especially considering everything contained here really is the work of one man. So it's amazing what's been achieved and really amazing what could potentially be achieved once the team is assembled and all of the funds from this Kickstarter go to work. I think you should play the alpha, give it a chance, see if you enjoy it, 
maybe throw a little funding their way and help to get this game to the state that I know it can get to with a little bit of polish and a lot of love from people like you and me. I have been Big Dave, and until next time, take it easy.